this subject. It's very good. We'll talk about the historical point I open in the Williams, which was uh, made in 2006. It talks about the telecommunication industries and the backup office operation support systems. And um, although I won't go into that much detail with the article, it says there was a change in the telecommunications act in 1996. And this was intended to open up for competition in the telecommunications market, which was to allow, um, uh, for example, in the local exchange market, for new companies to come in and offer services uh, so that they would no longer be a monopoly run by one company. Uh, but this was, um, in fact, it's difficult to implement because the companies had to um, open up uh, access to their systems, and I guess to order their operation support functions consisting of pre ordering, ordering, provisioning, maintenance, and repair, and billing functions supported by an incumbent collect database of their information. So, this involves allowing new companies to access these systems, and it also means they have to make general changes to their um, the data in the system when a customer went from one company to another, their, their orders and their bills and everything had to go to the new company. So he uh, points out that uh, the OSS functions, um, uh, says the system has been defined as a set of hardware, software, procedures, policies, Impression of it supports the following main activities. Network design and inventory, provisioning and activation of services, service assurance, interconnection, customer care and billing, and our work and workforce management. And these things are, um, um, he also emphasizes several times that the, the systems are complex, that the uh, whole industry has been changing from uh, and analog one to digital one, from landline services to mobile services, uh, involving new players, access to databases, and, and developing infrastructure for fulfillment, where some of the companies are only, only providing sales of services and not providing any complete fulfillment of services. So they're only uh, selling parts of the end to end service. And uh, different things like uh, providing quality of service, such as service assurance, uh, interconnection between different service providers. All of this has to seem seamless and useful to the customer. But uh, actually, the, the companies involved have to be able to exchange this information. And he points out the list of what is meant by uh, network design and inventory. Uh, Provide network design, provide workload distribution, provide physical virtual tasks between connected network components, um, provide complete connectivity management uh, from a customer service point to the central office. These are all these connectivity issues. Providing uh, activation of service, um, service assurance. Quality of service issues, interconnection issues, provide automated interconnection among multiple trading partners, um, customer care and billing, create an inter in in create and integrate automated uh, systems for asset order flow, and support customer relationships to help reduce customer acquisition costs, increase revenue return. So all of these things are the um, OSS functions. And a long list of things and so not necessarily easy to do. <coughs> so then uh, what I wanted to point out also was um, This is the, um, uh, the Ericsson 2000 
11 in the old court. And if I can see if it's all good. Here we have the addiction uh, trade with some of their managed services that the company provides. We say they do a um, uh, DT support system, uh, service network, the core network, transmission, and radio network. And here they provide uh, um, Ericsson's offering uh, covered under the design phase, the planning phase, the building phase, field operations, and network operations. And if you look at our project management uh, list, there's initiating, planning, executive team, executing, controlling, and closing. And here we have, they just don't provide strategy. So that's their own thing. And I leave that to the customer who's providing the strategy, and they provide the, the whole project in the uh, support. And then here we have the operations and business support system. <coughs> what has changed since. Um, since um, this article was that they used to call everything a uh, business support system, but uh, I mean operating support system, so now it's kind of um, they that the word business in more frequently. So they sometimes say operating support systems and business support systems, OSS and DSS. And uh, here they have that the, uh, the OSS systems are service fulfillment, making services available to users and service assurance, that's ensuring the quality of service. These are the OSS features. And then the DSS features are the business intelligence, user understanding and insights, customer relationships management, and customer support. So doing business intelligence and, and CRM, or the business support services. And these are all um, provided by Ericsson. Also, and this is the company that they have taken from the new report. Mm. They also mention the OSS on this page and page um, it's page seven. Does the OSS and DSS another two hundred million subscribers to buyers? Working and billing system. So we do a lot of different types of services. So they provide networks, global services, and multimedia services. So that was inside this uh, this 2011 annual report. It's quite one of the first pages, and then also within that uh, in the report, on pages 117 to 123, they talk about the risk factors. And um, um, so it's interesting that the company that supports. And, and they, they reported like profits and so forth in their, in their 150 page annual report. And um, they mention in this a long list of risk factors. So they're kind of warning their shareholders that there's a lot of things in the, in the environment that they don't have complete control over, even though they have control over uh, so of the technology factor. There's many things they don't have control over. So one of the things they mention are that um, uh, challenging global economic conditions may adversely impact the demand and pricing of our products and services, as well as limit our ability to grow. So this, is a, I would say, this is a market cap. And then they say that um, the telecommunications industry fluctuates and affects and is affected by the many factors, including economic, environment decisions, 
by operators and other customers regarding the deployment of technology and autonomy purchases. Services um, that's here and that would be uh, the business factor, business risk factor. And I also mentioned down here another that has to do with um, sales volumes and margins that are related to the variation in the short order times of the products and services. This is another business factor because it has to do with how they fulfill the orders and how efficient they are in fulfilling orders. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to be the moment, but there's like 20 factors here. So they're actually listing a lot of factors. And some of these things are related to um, the Porter Forces model. So, for example, um, uh, down here, they have our business depends upon the continued growth of mobile communications and acceptance of new services. And growth. If growth slows or new services do not succeed, the operators and investments and networks may slow off behind the business. If you remember this um, forces model, we have um, this is the uh, the rivalry. So this is the risk of new rivals, and we have uh, the, the threat of substitutes. We have the uh, threat of new entrants. And the uh, power of the supplier. And we have the power of the button. So this is the order of five forces. And this is evaluating the market forces. This is an internal rivalry in the market. And if you look on this um, on this list of risks, here they're listing substitute as a risk. The risk of new services substitutes. And here they're listing uh, the power of the supplier as being something that they need to account for. And their consolidation may lead to stronger competitors who are able to benefit from integration scans or the resources. So that also can be looked at as um, uh, the rivalry also, I think, but some, somehow it could also be supplied. And then uh, this uh, significant portion of the revenue is currently generated from a limited number of key customers and operators consolidation may increase our, our dependence on our key customers. And this has to do with the power of the buyer. So the buyers of the customers become stronger. Uh, there's also one about rivalry. Uh, we face intense competition from our existing competitors as well as new entrants including uh, IT companies entering the telecommunication market and this could materially adjust our affect our results. So we're talking about uh, uh, intense competition is the existing rivalry and new entrants uh, into the market. And so it's kind of they're covering all of these um, all of these forces or market uh, risk to them. And in addition, they talk about business, business risk. So they talk about the entering into the long term agreements with our customers. But, um, and then here they mention the constant cost reduction. So these are have to do with operation costs. Um, and they talk about contractual risk. So contractual risk would be is a business risk. Uh, they talk about how they re invest their research and development investments. Is there an uh, allocation of resources? Is a business risk? Um, they talk about their investments and the divestments in the structure. 
and our next uh, business. And then talk about joint ventures and partnerships, that's how they allocate their resources as a business risk. Uh, we'll talk about supply disruptions and cost increases as so well as what to do with their business. And then the why it's really only time that like, almost hardly anything about technology. But there is one on um, page 121. Um, it is here. Uh, our operations are complex and several critical operations are centralized in a single location. Any disruption in our operations, whether due to natural or man-made events, may be highly damaging to the operation of our business. So again, this, of course these are business risks, but this also has to do with the, the technology, the complexity of the technology. And they also mentioned another post um, had to do with the technology and um, potential risks related to electromagnetic fields and its effect of the virus product liability claims and it's also in the regulatory changes. Uh, these are Again, these are also business problems because it's like how they deal with regulations and standardization, but it also has to do with technology. Um, technology. So um, it's amazing that they have uh, like this. Um, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages of risk that are explained by this company. So it's. <laughs> You know, it's a complex industry. Um, what I wanted to point out also was on this uh, page, uh, in the in the photos, there's a link. It's the extra links on management of OSS, and this has includes this annual report that has those pages. I took those pages out because uh, so they're separate links, but also there's the whole report is based on this is their website that they have all their annual reports and you can actually see 2012 there as well. So you can look at that to see if anything has changed. And then um, I just wanted to show this video because this kind of sums up nice and briefly uh, the issue about uh, BSS and OSS.
this up and um, talk about uh, your planning and executing this is optimizing and we talked about the, the differences between the DSS services and the OSS services and how it has expanded beyond, I mean it's the same services but now they have classified from this DSS instead of just the OSS. So it's the same set of services too. Delivering services to customers, and yeah. um, and then this uh, that was video made by Ericsson, and it's an Ericsson in the report, so you can actually compare between the two and take a look at it again. Okay, um, and I hope you see how it relates to project management and how they talk also about um, and, and managing risk. And, and Response for the next exercise, so you have to actually analyze the 